uh, Masters Union. Uh, this is the a B school which is uh, initiated its wings in uh, in in Gurgaon, and uh, Pratham is here with us, and so is Mr. Uh, Siddharth uh, uh, Rastogi. I'll introduce them in a minute. But Masters Union is a very interesting concept. You see, they have they have ensured that the best in the industry, the real the people who actually uh, have performed in industry, have worked in industry. are going to be your teachers you know more often than not it is just just plain academicians who who interact or integrate or have a long term duration long duration kind of a um, a program with you but this is really different i always wanted to have a b school uh, beyond ims uh, which had a similar concept so it's a pleasure to have them with us over here today this is a fantastic opportunity to interact with one of the financial greats in this country mr siddharth rastogi so let me introduce him to you first uh, siddharth uh, is uh, is the managing director with a leading investment bank in their asset management arm so it's ambit capital if i am not mistaken yes it is ambit and has over two decades of fantastic experience in the areas of finance economy and markets right and markets is not marketing guys it's it's markets as in financial markets and siddhartha was one of the co-founding members of iifl wealth and has also worked with city bank and udi bank in the past siddhartha is also a master okay along uh, is also a master in the masters union so not only will you see him here but if you if you happen to be or lucky enough to be a part of this program then he will also be one of your guides and mentors at uh, masters union so thank you kamlesh a really kind introduction uh tony path to all my fellow countrymen all the students everyone let's talk about 5 trillion dollar economy all views which you will hear are my personal views and they have nothing to do with ambit or any of its associate companies second thing which is a caution remember guys what i am going to be talking about are very deep concepts i am very very inspired by mahabharat and that's why i always go back to mahabharat to take inspiration what happened after the battle of mahabharat when all the kauravas were killed there were large number of casualties which happened in mahabharat after that krishna told pandavas to have a ashwamegh yagya to ensure to ensure that everything comes back to normalcy there is goodness all around so as krishna suggested pandavas did a ashwamedh yagya and everybody i'm sure have seen enough of ramayana and mahabharat in life there was a horse which was sent and everybody bowed in front of the horse and all the kingdoms eventually were under pandavas after that there was a feast which was given to all brahmins krishna said when this ashwamedh yagya will be over when this when this holy thing will be over there will be a bell which will ring in the sky everybody did whatever krishna suggested they fed every brahmin at that point in time in aryavrat the bell didn't ring draupadi was perturbed draupadi was very very perturbed how will we bring goodness back on this planet in this world so she went to her sakha to her friend krishna and krishna said you have fed everyone but there is one man one saint who is a tribal saint he only eats when he is hungry and he picks up whatever is available whether leaves whether plants whatever is available if draupadi is or pandavas are able to feed that saint this hamon this saint will be successful he didn't come then all pandavas went with their all their might and bhim said why don't you come and take our take whatever you want we'll give you everything we'll give you money we'll give you food whatever you want this 
Yeah, I, I'm very sorry. I mean, I think I think Siddhartha's connectivity is a little poor, but I'm sure Pratham's is fantastic, right? Hi, Pratham. It's such a pleasure to have you with us. So, Pratham Mittal, guys, is the project director of Masters Union School of Business, and he has completed his undergraduate and graduation from the Wharton School. He is also an alumnus of Dune, and he previously founded Outgrow, a software platform used by now most financial institutions over there, or uh, rather the jur journals over there. So New York Times uses it, Wall Street Journal uses it for their entire web management. Uh, the company was recently ranked as the top B two B software company in the Greater New York area, and after Pratham has moved recently to India, he, he has founded Neta. That's another app that he has founded. Somehow he is interested in tech. All right, so he's founded another app, Neta, a political ratings app with over 28 million users. That is phenomenal. Uh, can you swing the election by your app, Pratham? By any chance? <laughs> no, you can't. Answer that question. Not I will. You rather you better not answer that question. Okay, never mind. All right. So so jokes apart, I mean, I I think I I leave leave it to you to explain what Masters Union is all about, right? So you are leading this project. It's your your you know you have you have your brainchild. You have brought all these masters together, and it's a very unique concept in the Indian or global MBA scenario, right? So, uh, if you, it, it would be fantastic if you will be able to give the students a gist about how MBA Masters is different, but not, you know, a little bit. Sure. And then, what is the process of selection? What happens in the program? Uh, I have seen it's a very unique uh, timing, right? It is 16 months with eight semesters. So, if you could explain that a bit, and most importantly, since we want to grow to that five trillion economy, gender parity is important. I hope you have some scholarships for the students, and especially for the girls. Okay, so it's over to you. Sir. So I, I think, uh, you know, as Kamleshji mentioned, uh, you know, Masters Union is a new age business school, right? Uh, what we are trying to do is do two things uh, or three things fundamentally differently. Uh, and, you know, this will feed into the $5 trillion conversation that we're having with Siddharthji. So first is that we wanted to make sure that all of our professors are people who have real experience in the industry and are not professors who themselves have never stepped into the boardroom which is the case with most business schools today. And because of that, the students are not able to get, you know, hands-on experience. So with people like uh, Siddharthji coming into the classroom, that completely transforms the experience for the students, right? Uh, so that's one, you know, where you bring uh, practitioners, uh, you know, CEOs, MDs, um, even have three members of parliament uh, who are teaching as part of the curriculum. Uh, you know, we have uh, someone like MD of Airtel, Mr. Manoj Kohli, teaching a course on management. We have um, someone like um, Mr. Arun Mehra, who uh, was the chairman of uh, Boston Consulting Group for the longest time, teaching management consulting. Um, you know, we have Dr. Narendra Jadav, who's an RBI economist, coming and teaching. Right. So, uh, with with this sort of uh, expertise coming into the classroom, the students can expect a very different, vibrant uh, experience. So that's one. Second is to make sure that the learning is very hands-on. You know, so uh, you know, in a the hospital, in a medical college, it's always the doctors who are teaching, not professors, right? These are doctors who are doing surgeries in the morning and teaching in the evening, right? And they don't teach via lectures. They actually, the students get to work on real patients. They get to work on real cadavers. They get to work on real surgeries from day one, right? And so what we have done is we have tried to make sure that every class uh, at Masters Union feels like an internship, right? It feels like an internship. So for example, every class has a consulting project. Every class has a field tour where you actually go to the class on a supply chain. You actually are transported to the Adani port in Gujarat, in Kandla. And the port manager there will teach you supply chain. Right? So that's the kind of in-situ learning that we are trying to create. Then there is actually a real fund. There's a five crore fund that the masters have very generously created, which the students will invest from the students will actually invest from that fund into equities, into stocks, into real estate, into startups. And that's how they will learn investing in real, in real life, right? It's not just, you know, some simulation with real money. Uh, there's going to be one-to-one, -one, uh, you know, uh, mentorship with every student. So every student will get a mentor in the industry, right? Uh, and then the, the mentor will be working with the student to make sure that the career path is clearly laid out. And the third thing, which is really different is that this, College is located inside Gurgaon. In fact, in the most, uh, you know, uh, premier building of Gurgaon. 
we share our uh, the big it's a large building it's a 3 million square feet building and we share that building with uh, pcg with bank of america with nielsen with top corporates right and so it makes it really easy for us to play students in those companies when we are actually sharing office space with that company it becomes really easy for corporates from those companies to come downstairs and teach right so that's the kind of business school that we are trying to create and you know this uh, you know this experience with uh, siddharth ji is a way to demo to you what a classroom looks like you know um, so i i'll stop right there and i think siddharth ji is back but i'll i'll i'll, I'll give it to him to continue it was an amazing story that you were telling so 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 i was saying that draupadi draupadi then draupadi then cooked the food on her own and she went she went to saint supach and she said saint i have cooked this food on my own and i want you to take it and bless us so that this entire ashwamedh yagya is going to get over so saint supach said that i will come but i have only one condition on which i will come i want the entire punya or entire blessings which you will get of ashwamedh yagya i want the blessings and then only i will come so draupadi said draupadi was wondering what to do because there is only one ashwamedh yagya and if we get this if we get the blessings then how would the goodness come on this planet then she then she remembered krishna and she realized that krishna once said that every one step you take for goodness of others is equivalent to ashwamedh yagya and she said saint i have taken 500 steps and i am here because i want this yagya to get get blessed by you so in return i am being blessed with 500 ashwamedh yagya blessings and i am willing to give you the blessings of one and rest you can bless me saint supach was so happy with the answer of draupadi that he came and he ate whatever draupadi had cooked and blessed the entire entire pandavas and after that the bell rang in the in in the sky so 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 why why am i telling you this story what is this this connection with 5 trillion dollar economy it's very very simple so i'm sure people who are listening to me some of them must be engineers and if they would have heard or if they would have learned in physics observer effect and what is meant by observer effect observer effect basically means as soon as you are observing any object the light passes through and the outcome changes in philosophical way if i have to interpret it 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 very simply means that if you change your outlook if you change your outlook your outcome also changes so 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 that's what is observer effect so the first thing we need to do the first thing for a 5 trillion dollar economy we need to be is to have an attitude to achieve it kamlesh rightly said kamlesh rightly said that if by 2024 or by 2025 which is next 4 years 5 years if we need to achieve if we need to achieve a 5 trillion dollar economy and we are at 3 trillion dollar economy already so essentially it means it's not very it's not very tough right we are at 3 trillion dollar today we are at 2.95 trillion dollars that's the last number which i saw or a 3 trillion dollar and if we have to reach a 5 trillion dollar economy which means i need to do just merely two third more two third essentially more basically basically means 66% and if i have to break it into very very simple maths i have to achieve a growth rate of 7 to 7.5% on a compounded basis over next 4 to 5 years with an inflation with an inflation which can be which can be anything around 5 to 6% so 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 these are these are these are the numbers which which i need to achieve but more importantly more importantly we need to understand one more more aspect 
essentially what i am trying to say here is that we are we are still not so worse off and there are, there are two three things we need to understand when we are trying to fix fix this uh, fix this solution or trying to find the solution of 5 trillion dollar economy first what are our pockets which are weaker which areas we need to ensure that there is potential there is capability but it is still under delivering so there are there are three very eminent areas and i will i will explain to you the first one is india as a india has so like any other any other economy india has got three sectors service sector industry which is manufacturing or agri agriculture now in this 3 trillion dollar almost 54% is contributed by services however 32% of the total working population is employed in services so keep in mind guys 32% working population and 54% contribution to the gdp industry 25% are employed in manufacturing and they contribute closer to 30% to the gdp and the fourth one and the third one agriculture where 43% of the people are employed in agriculture and 16% is the is the output which essentially means clearly that agriculture is is pulling us down okay so that's that's one statistics you have to keep in mind i'll come back to the solutions in in a bit but keep in mind that's one area which we need to focus on the second problem the, the second issue which i see the second issue or the second growth area i don't see any issues ever in the world i only see areas and the potential and the opportunities because remember if somebody is not doing something good it means you have the opportunity to do it better and ensure that you become the market leader so i have only opportunities in my life nothing else so the second biggest opportunity which india presents is india has a india has a population of 137 crore people and if i look if i have to look at the sex ratio in india it is for every 1000 women we have got 1075 men or if i have to put it in perspective for every 100 men we have got 93 women which means merely 3.5% more are men as compared to women merely 3.5% but look at the statistics look at the statistics so this is very very recent statistics which was done by ILO international labor organization and they said that the total female labor force participation in india is closer to 23.5% 20 Three and a half percent, which means one in every four women in India only look for a job or is employed. Rest three are not even interested in taking up a job or are looking out for a job. Okay, so that's the that's the second second problem area which 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 I clearly see. And the third thing is there are whole lot of people who have willingness to work, who have limited skill set because if you look at today india in 137 crore population you have got 65% of the that total population is between 25 years to 60 years of age so they they are all productive 65% and if i have to look at people who are teenagers from 13 14 years till about 65 which is also the working population it covers almost 80 80% of the total india's population so we have a huge workforce they have willingness to work they want to have a respect life but the bigger challenge is limited opportunity limited option to contribute and hence and hence this and hence this 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 problem this problem comes up so these are the three these are the three opportunities and if we and if we fix these 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 three three opportunities Uh, or if we in cash rather these three opportunities we have a we have a brilliant way we have a brilliant way to 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 ensure that our numbers nominally which is 
real plus nominal reaches there but how do we do it so let me come back here on the on little bit on the life cycle of any country so you understand in any business and pratham can vouch for it because pratham is a great businessman and uh, uh, and i'm sure that uh, most of you inspire even even people can learn from kamlesh how he built ims it's very very simple phenomenon it all originates it all starts from the capital so in any business you have limited pool of capital by the way guys it's very interesting that in this world or on this planet there are only two things which are limited only two things rest everything is is available in abundance it's available unlimited only two things one human bandwidth so you have only 24 hours and you can only focus on x number of things so i'll give you a simple example what what i'm what i mean by it what i mean by it so i'm sure a lot of you know how to drive and i'm sure all of you all of you know how to use the smartphones as well so think about it if you start if you start using a smartphone while driving so if you start texting while driving third or fourth or fifth time you will not be there on this planet to either to drive or to text so imagine two very basic things we can't do it parallelly and we think of multi so human bandwidth human focus is very very important so that's one that's exactly what a nation also needs what is the political will what is the economic will of the people what do they want to achieve do you want prosperity economic freedom or do you want egalitarian society do you want capitalist society do you what what are the people aiming for that's the focus which will help the country its its leaders to reach so your human bandwidth and your focus and a very good example of so, so a lot of people a lot of people think that china is a threat look at it 40 45 years back there was a massive famine almost 2 crore plus people died in that famine in china and today china in nominal terms is trying to be the largest economy in the world we so 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 that is a single party regime let's talk about some of the democracies south korea vietnam the biggest example of this is finland by the way guys after the second world war after the second world war finland was not finland was not even taken into the united nations because they were economically impoverished after 54 56 they were inducted into united nations because they had some financial wherewithal immediately they asked for help they were receiving aid from united nations and today exactly after exactly after 60 years they have one of the largest per capita income in the world they have one of the most sophisticated societies in the world one of the most developed societies in the world with absolutely no poverty so what it means is the will of the people not only the government the will of the people where you want to be so the first thing is that the the human bandwidth the human focus the second most important thing is capital now that's the second thing which is available less which is not available in plenty like any company like any promoter needs money because the cycle is very simple you have capital capital is put to create human resources and physical resources that cycle moves from physical and human resources you sweat and that's how you get the sales from sales you get the operating profit from operating profit you get the net profit from net profit you get the dividends or reinvestment back so essentially 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 what you are saying is very very simple capital limited similarly for india's growth capital is one very basic requirement 
because if more capital flows into the country more number of people will have access to better resources and hence with limited labor you can still you can still innovate and you can still grow so 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 that's the that's the that's that's one of the most important things capital and interestingly in in uh, masters union i'm only going to talk about i'm only going to teach you guys the most important thing without which nobody can sustain nobody can survive nobody can live is capital because if you do not have the capital you would not you would not thrive so coming back onto the 5 trillion dollar economy so i spoke about the capital now india if you look at the fiscal deficit of the country india's fiscal deficit between state center and local government put together is put together is is approximately in double digits you know low double digits it may be 9% it may be 9.5% it may be 10% or it may be 11% so that's 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 broadly the number and that is the crux of the issue and that's where that's where the bigger opportunity lies because rest of the world which has capital has no growth whilst india will have largely huge amount of growth and hence and hence automatically capital will flow into the market which has which has a larger market which has a larger demand and which has a which has a larger number of people to 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 buy and give the returns back to that capital because capital is very finicky it runs wherever the returns come from and that's where that's where india india is going to come into the play now coming back to the to the to the three three uh, three things which i spoke about women so i i i I'll, i'll give you a very simple example so imagine there is a there is a housewife there is a housewife and uh, uh, she is a she is a graduate and she is doing extremely well uh, uh, you know as a, as a homemaker she is she is nurturing the family but fortunately or unfortunately she is not contributing anything to the gdp one day she decides that she will start taking tuition classes very very simple tuition classes of 8th standard 7th standard because she is fairly equipped that day a lot of lot of students come in and she starts teaching a as soon as she starts undertaking that her household income increases that's one the second thing which happens is people who are sending their children so i'm assuming that uh, these are these are parents who have who have no time to you know to to teach their children uh, they may be they may be uh, in seventh standard or eighth standard and hence they are willing to pay that tuition fees in the process the mother who is working is also able to spend more time and more energy and more focus on her work rather than tutoring the child so the productivity of the lady whose child is coming for tuition also increases so that's the second because of that the company's productivity also increases that's the third thing which happens the child clears with better numbers with he progresses very well and he gets superior d school education and then superior superior job and in turn he creates more value addition to the gdp that's fourth so this is also known as an interesting concept which is again in physics which is a chaos theory or butterfly impact where small changes small changes in your life can lead to massive outcomes small change big impact small different small small minute steps big leap so so that's 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 one problem which the women folk in india have to solve for and this can't be solved by the government this has to be has to be solved by the entrepreneurship and i'm sure masters union in this entire scheme of things is trying to create not only employees but also entrepreneurs because until unless you create massive entrepreneurs you will never have economy reaching its reaching its full potential so that's that's one one thing the second thing is uh mahatma gandhi once said that the future and the soul of india lives in its villages now we constantly see that 
migration and and today i'm sure everybody is reading about the migrant labor problem and they want to go they they are having trouble in going back to their villages now my point is very very simple we can have specialized villages we can have specialized villages which are manufacturing only one product and india has such a large coast on each each city or in each village which is along the coast you can manufacture and create huge export oriented unit which can which can cater to the requirement of the world interestingly this is one area which india is still not focusing and i'll use some data and statistics here the global trade the import plus export because whatever is imported has to be exported from somewhere so the global trade across the world is 23 trillion dollars while india's india's figure is only 482 billion dollars so india only exports 482 billion dollars out of 23 trillion dollars so our share is only 2.1% now the interesting part is not about the share of the ex exports the interesting part is out of this 482 trillion dollars 70% of the export is on the basic food on the basic raw material on the agriculture products not on the sophisticated item whilst that portion is 30% of the global trade so it it essentially means that if i have to break 23 trillion dollars of global trade 30% is food perishable items low intensive products 70% are high technology products smartphones ics diodes so so sophisticated products india's 70% is targeted towards the 30% that's the irony and that needs to be fixed not from the cities but from the villages where specialized units can be set to ensure that this export happens so that's a that's a second thing which which can happen and you don't need to have too much of political will or government intervention there people themselves we have seen self help groups Lijjat Papad is a classic example. Amul is a classic example. How people came together and create massive brands, massive success. The third, the third thing which which one has to solve for is is the is the youth population which I which and for that it's a very simple way. You create a social framework, and what do you mean by social framework? Very very simple. Uh, today, if anybody, I'm sure some of you would have used Uber, right? uh or somebody would have used ola when you use when you call for the uh, for the ola or uber you you press you you press from where to where you want to go and uh, from where you want to start and then depending on the journey the driver rates you and you rate the driver so there is a both way both way rating system now imagine there are a whole bunch of senior citizens who are staying in india and who need help and there are a whole bunch of people who want to extend help but the problem is but the problem is there is no matching of of them then the help seekers need to be matched with the help providers and the help providers then have to be given some kind of an incentive and it may not be monetary it may be with just simple points and how do you monitor the quality control just by the point system and if one creates this kind of a socio economic infrastructure then whatever points you gather you it can be in cash for food and for medicines very very simple from the from the from any of the from any of the shops which are recognized by the government so it's kind of a digital currency which can be used for food for medicines and that's what can simply solve the problem so 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 the so the way so the way i so the way i look at things the way i look at things is very very simple the solution the solution everybody knows the numbers everybody knows knows that uh, that 7 and 1/2% or 8% growth may look steep but who knows uh, and 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 let me give you very simple anecdote 1918 was the so every every 250 years there has been a pandemic or an epidemic which has hit the planet so don't get worried about guys about this covid if you go from 350 bc since then the pandemics have constantly been hitting one after the other one after the other 
uh, in the human system. So uh, earlier for the for for first 1500 years, it was plague. It was driven by bacteria. And as the antibacterial was found in 1900, the 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 first major virus infection happened in in 1889, and the second next best happened in the 1918, which was a Spanish flu. And look at the data, guys. Look at the data at that point in time. World population at that point in time was 180 crore. Today we are 760 crore people. 50 crore got infected at that point in time. 50 crore. Today the infections are closer to 36 and a half lakh people. 2 crore mortality. So 2 crore casualties at that point in time. Today we are closer to 2 and a half odd lakh number uh, in, in, in terms of death, right? Despite of that, and this is the data which is only available for US, the US GDP into the and it lasted for two years. It started in Jan of 18, 1918, and it ended in November, December of 1919. In 1918, we saw a GDP growth rate which was closer to eight to nine percent. In 1919, the GDP growth was almost negligible, 0.83 percent. And next year it fell in 1920, it fell. After that, there was a growth rate, which was in next couple of years, it was 13%, 7, 8%. So, so the growth rate after any, after any casualty, after any pandemic is very, very steep. And my reckoning is that the way India is positioned, the way India is, is, is having its resources, its capability and in blessings, uh, there is, there, there cannot be any, any second thought that we may hit a double digit growth perhaps two years from now. And I wouldn't be surprised that uh, maybe in 24 or maybe in 25, we may hit the, the, the $5 trillion mark. But keep in mind, guys, to hit this, there are two very interesting things which, which, one, needs to, which one needs to also look at. One is India needs to beef up its, its spent on the education because there were almost 30 to 40 studies which were done in the West, nothing in the East which said that if every dollar spent in education over a period of two decades uh, contributes $20 in GDP, so 1 is to 20, that's the kind of ratio. And superior higher education, better the contribution to the GDP. So you can imagine, you can imagine that if the focus is on the quality education and that's where, that's where master union comes into play. If, 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 edu if institutes, universities like these are able to create entrepreneurs, are able to create executives, are able to create professionals, which can take lead and create value for the GDP, there will be no looking back. So that's, that's one aspect. The second aspect is that India's healthcare system is, is needs, needs, uh, needs little bit of attention and, and, and rightfully so it is being looked at very, very carefully. So if the India's medical or the India's healthcare infrastructure, and uh, I think I think Ayurvedic uh, uh, machinery, which has which has come which has come in the recent times, is proving to a great great preventive preventive cure measure, which will which will go a long way in in increasing the productivity, the viability of the entire of the entire country's e uh, health system, which in turn which in turn will improve the economic growth automatically because if people are more healthier the the number of days off the higher the productivity it's a very very simple logic nobody has to explain that but but i think uh, these two areas these two areas specifically uh, if 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 uh, society the entire society and an entire uh, local government state government and the central governments can work together i think I think I'm very optimistic that by 24 or 25, because one year or one and a half years up or down won't, won't really make a difference. The idea is if that $5 trillion economy actually happens, almost, almost 95% of the total India's population will be out of poverty. Unfortunately, because of this, because of this pandemic, a lot of people, a lot of people may be pushed into poverty back again. But uh, my reckoning is that 12 months from now, once, once, once things will start improving, once things will start becoming normal, the bounce back will be far more sharper, far more greater. Uh, initiative has to be taken by individuals. Initiative has to be taken by 
people themselves if you create system which will promote the weak you will never win because remember weakness never kills weakness small can never make any one bigger so you have to figure out ways to come out of your weakness you have to figure out you have to figure out ideas opportunities start thinking a different perspective and i'm sure sky is the limit and uh, in fact in fact i have uh, some time back one of the ims actually came back to me and said that uh, sadha do you see that india can achieve a 10 trillion dollar mark uh, i said i am extremely hopeful forget a 5 trillion dollar economy i am hopeful that this decade will be india's decade and by 2030 2030 india will be a 10 trillion dollar economy so my keyword is 10 in 10 10 trillion dollars in 10 years and that's about it from from my side i'm happy to take any questions i'm happy to clarify any doubts Uh, okay, Siddharth, uh, thank you very much. That was, I think, uh, very interesting. And there is a student over here, Nitin Nagarwal. He yeah. has written there some very important points being raised by Mr. Siddhartha. Really enjoying this webinar. It's a master class. I'm sure he is going to be your student. Okay. Thank you, Nitin. <laughs> okay, never mind. So now we'll come to the questions. Uh, there is an anonymous attendee. These anonymous attendees, you know, they should at least put their names. But never mind. how to get real exposure of business after corona pandemic i mean now i don't know how to put this question but how to get the real exposure of business after corona pandemic is to start a business yourself so 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 very very simple very very simple right uh, what will happen what yeah. will happen after the corona pandemic there will be certain goods the best thing to do is there will be certain goods which will be short in supply and you don't have to even wait for the ending of the corona pandemic what you need to do is there will be certain goods which are short in supply there are certain goods which are excess in supply can you find alternative use can you find alternative value from these goods and services figure out the arbitrage and here goes the business fantastic now you touched upon this earlier but i think still there is a question and it is a interesting question it will just remind everybody which yeah. sectors in the economy needs to be focused in order to achieve the 5 trillion mark okay so 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 let me let me uh, give you a very simple statistics here uh, so everybody everybody understands everybody understands that uh, uh, services contribute 54% of the 54% of the total total gdp right uh, and lot of people are actually worried lot of people are actually worried that aviation will go for a toss hospitality will go for a toss right uh, because of this covid now think about it in the services sector hotels restaurants and aviation all put together and i'm not including keep in mind guys uh, the the cargo because cargo is still moving the passenger vehicle in the aviation is under restriction okay yes, so yes. just look at these three sectors they merely contribute one quarter in this in this 54% while people like kamlesh while people like pratham while people like siddharth rastogi we are working actually 8 am to 8 pm we are we are actually engaging more with people because we are not traveling hence we are we are we are using more of our time to engage and that is contributing to the gdp so 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 uh, what will drive what will drive the what will drive the 5 trillion dollar economy is very very simple first it has to be it has to be export oriented so we have to we have to make sure that we are relevant so india india's brain is the best in the world india indians are known for their brains you look at any part of the world we have to start using technology and in ensuring that technology hardware is also manufactured and produced in india and exported so that's that's one area which will so that's one area which will which will drive the second area would be consumption so as as we are seeing that there is a lot of emotional uh, pushback to 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 china because of this 
because of this pandemic right uh, and if you look at the western world if you look at the western world and whether it is europe or whether it is us systematically these guys systematically these guys decided in 1980s and 1990s to exit everything every product every service which is low end so from a tissue paper manufacturing to a hand towel to a shoes to anything everything is being outsourced because they only want to keep the ip they only want to keep the intellectual property and they only want to deal with the high end stuff so who's going to do the who's going to do the low end job now till now china was doing it and my reckoning is that large part of it is going to be shifted into into asian markets which where bangladesh india vietnam south korea malaysia indonesia all of these will be jointly beneficial so 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 clearly consumer discretionary non discretionary demand infrastructure growth and high end high end intellectual intellectually driven software or computer systems or ics so these are the these are the things which will which will drive drive india to a uh, to a to a 10 trillion dollar economy so guys don't focus on the 5 trillion dollar economy uh, hopefully hopefully we we should be the third largest economy by the end of this decade we should be the third largest economy by the end of this decade या थैंक यू सिद्धार्थ आपके मुंह में घी शक्कर और लड्डू पता नहीं क्या क्या बोलते हैं दिस इज समथिंग लाइक दैट राइट ओके नेवर माइंड राइट सो सी आई थिंक आई वुड लाइक टू ऐड सम मोर मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट ओवर देयर इज एजुकेशन यू नो वी हैव गॉट द यंगेस्ट पॉपुलेशन एंड वी हैव नो हाई एंड स्किलिंग जस्ट डोंट लुक एट इंजीनियर्स जस्ट डोंट लुक एट बीकॉम स्टूडेंट्स हाई एंड स्किलिंग इज कंप्लीटली मिसिंग अबाउट ट्वेंटी मिलियन पीपल इफ दे डोंट कम आउट ऑफ द पॉवर्टी लाइन or rather have skills which can contribute to high tech it will become quite a challenge so anyway uh, that was my two pens into it and of course you have to always look at the glass being half full but uh, sidar just one more thing there are many questions now i have almost 36 of them so if sure. you can quickly answer these sure. questions it will be nice and i will not add my two pens after this i promise sure. okay sure. <laughs> all right so uh, 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 you know this guy is talking about a uh, nominal gdp and uh, real gdp we all understand that considers almost everything except well being considering right. the current debt to gdp ratio which is 20% i really doubt if at all it is possible to reset the economy towards 5 trillion uh, okay so that he has given an opinion he says it's difficult and somebody else will say it is possible but i think here it is more important if you could explain what is nominal gdp and real gdp okay so 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 very clearly guys uh, uh, nominal and real essentially means that real real gdp means that the inflation is not taken into account so what does gdp basically mean gdp basically means value of goods and services produced in the country and there are two ways to compute that either you can use the income method or you can use the expenditure method what do you mean by the income method income method means that the sale value of all the goods and services without duplication uh, where 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 any intermediation or the value addition is removed and the and the goods and services which are produced at the end and sold ultimate for consumption that's the that's the income method and the expenditure means the ad adding of all the all the value addition over the on goods and services that's a simplistic way now there is another element to it which is inflation inflation yes. basically means cost of means uh, because of the money supply because of the uh, because of the goods are limited while the while the money supply in the economy is 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 constantly higher to ensure ensure that every every person has its fair share that's where the inflation comes into picture so when i add the real real gdp growth which i explained to you the value of goods and services uh, in 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 real terms plus the inflation uh then then it becomes then it becomes nominal now the question question kamlesh is very very interesting that uh, uh the the debt to gdp the so 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 for for quite a few for quite a few countries the the public debt to gdp the public debt to gdp is as high as as high as 150% 175% in some cases above 200% as well for india it is less than 74% right so there is there is there is definitely there is definitely room 
for for the debt capital to come in more importantly more importantly even if the equity capital comes in it's a win win scenario so remember equity capital means higher risk for the investors and equity capital always chases always chases higher returns now it's interesting that very limited set of economies in the world have actually real inflation so india has got an inflation which is closer to 4 5 6% uh, rest of the world may have a inflation which is anything from 0.5% to a, to a 2% number right and when people look at their return they they add they add both these they add both these figures the value growth and the volume growth and that's where india stands tall because without doing anything if you have a value growth because of inflation the risky capital or the equity capital is much much easier to attract and that's where that's where uh, that's where that's where india needs to focus on and that's where india will win will have significant upswing in the in in, in times to come right wonderful uh, sida thank you just to remind all the students and our panelists uh we had a 15 uh, 20 minute issue in the beginning so we will continue this session until 6:30 we'll extend it by 30 minutes uh, uh siddharth will answer all the questions for the next 15 minutes and then we will go to pratham and he has to answer some questions about the institute itself i hope that works for everybody uh, so let's go to the next question now these are two questions one is somebody called moto g very interesting name and other is alok dharpure both are asking almost similar questions we will see manufacturing will shift from china to india which is what you have mentioned but it is not coming it is going to vietnam and taiwan and bangladesh now we have a massive opportunity what needs to be done we understand now the interesting question both alok and moto ji have asked is what do you think are the policy changes that are required to ensure that we are able to grab this pie of the business coming out of china so very very simple i think i think uh... Uh, uh i i made a few recommendations and thankfully thankfully government has actually uh, you know accepted few of the recommendations and you will see that get, getting implemented very very quickly very very soon so the first thing is manufacturing and services need to have need to have a different have to need to have a different different uh uh approval system because remember that manufacturing requires lot more number of approvals for fipb to give and for the money to come into the into into the segment while if one has to look at the services it's much more simpler much more easier and the quantum can be far far higher so so i think that's the first basic differentiation which which government is already contemplating and i'm sure in 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 few days or in few months time you will hear that notification coming in where these two will have separate separate systems to 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 come to come on to come on board so that's that's one thing which which uh, which is very very easy the second thing is uh you have to club all the all the licenses so one can be the climate of uh, and services is fairly easy because services is is barely a single window and you just need two three two three two three very standard procedures so getting foreign money into the into the into the service sector is very very easy but to have a green field project that's where you need environmental clearance you need the local body clearance and then you need all the all the uh, all the state state regulation so so what what the center government has already started doing is is working with each of the states where uh, where one person because remember that irrespective of whatever is the relationship between the state and the federal every state is interested that the plant or the or, or the unit should be set up in their place hence they are more than eager to work with the federal system uh, to attract the capitals and they are happy to give a single window clearance at the state level and there can be a single window clearance which is at the federal level so i think i think even these basic things are implemented 90% of the 90% of the red tape 90% of the bureaucracy is is going to get removed and interestingly if you look at today india is actively soliciting to ensure that that fdi money comes into comes into uh, india uh, and and you know obviously obviously people will people will go to thailand people will go to indonesia people will go to philippines malaysia vietnam south korea but india because of two very specific reasons a a 
vibrant democracy, good judicial system, and second most important, domestic captive market, large domestic captive market. Because of these two things, India will always be the preferred destination. And I'm very, very excited and hopeful that this, this entire pandemic will lead to the shift in to, to India. So that's, that's my two bits. Oh, that is that is fantastic. Now, uh, uh, there is one question. Uh, scope for energy sector in making the five trillion uh, five trillion dollar economy. How can they help achieve this goal? The energy sector. So energy. So so so. Uh, remember remember that earlier earlier oil oil was the uh, oil was the was the was the thing engine. which which, which, engine. which, yeah. which people which people used to seek now data is the new thing right. and uh, energy is now primarily going to be driven by the is going to be driven by renewables so 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 uh, people who will get into the modern technology people who will be able to preserve energy so currently the biggest challenge is that you can't you can't preserve energy you can't store energy right and that's where that's where that's where with the with the electric cars and the electrification of of lot of goods and services which will which will come people will be able to store store energy and whosoever will take lead into that because the older models of power generation the older models will in next 5 years will go out everything will be about storage about renewables and uh, i'm very i'm i'm very hopeful that with the with the long coastline which india has we both have sun and wind which is uh, which is which is which is a great great boon for india to ensure ensure that in both the spaces we 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 come we come straight uh, and contribute towards the 5 trillion dollar economy right right okay uh, so the shreya shukla is asking many people are migrating to metro cities for the better job prospects how can we solve this migrant crisis now shreya i i i you know this the, you know i'll tell you something 3% of the total land mass are cities in the world but they produce almost 83% of the gdp and till we don't learn to you know shift our gdp perspective from from cities to the interiors it's going to be difficult to solve a migrant class right i mean you look at the us we all aspire or most of us aspire to go and live in the us go and live in the canada or go and live in canada or australia this is because then we become Emigrants, we are just called emigrants, right? But we also become a migrant in this case and go to some other place and want to earn your keep and have a better lifestyle. That's all there is to it. So we will not. So I hope we will not handle this question here. Uh, she again asks, "What are your views on make in India? Why don't we have much success till now, and how can we improve?" Uh, so, uh, Siddharth, if you can quickly answer this question, then because there are quite a few. Sure. Okay. So make in India. The reason. Uh, we had limited limited success because remember i gave you some statistics and uh, that industry itself industry itself contributes only only 30% of the gdp right now uh, so 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 why are we why are we only looking at make in india why can't we look at serve in india services contribute 80% of the us gdp uh, services contribute closer to 90% plus in south korea we have one of the best in terms of spoken english we are one of the best in terms of brain we are one of the best in our service orientation so don't look at only make in india the way now government is also looking at is serve in india so it does not matter whether you manufacture in india you can manufacture in india and it will take time because india is a india is a large large country but essentially the focus has to be service orientation and as soon as the service orientation comes in i think i think we will crack it very easily to a 10 trillion dollar economy okay fantastic okay guys uh, i think what we can do is we will ask uh, siddharth i'm sure he's also busy to take one final question and then uh, you guys can write to Siddharth, you can write to me, uh, you can write to uh, you can write to Pratham and you can ask all these questions. I hope uh, that is okay Siddharth with you and both Pratham. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Yes. Okay. So uh, let me see what is the, what will happen to, okay. Let me see if there is an interesting question. Uh, okay.
Okay, here yeah. Shivam Narula. Very interesting. This is a long one, but it's quite interesting. Uh, very interesting points being raised, highlighted by you, sir. But I think that all Indian companies are willing to provide export competitive products. Uh, but when it comes to competing with the Chinese products, we lag a lot in terms of technological advancements, which hinders our cost as well as the quality of Indian products. In all industries in manufacturing sector, pharma, automobile, textiles, even bicycles. Uh, so don't you think the government is responsible for this and they should provide help for technological upgradation and investment in innovative products, which in ground reality is based only on an entrepreneur's effort. So, 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 so my two bits is why are we, why are we blaming government for the technology? Why? So, so, so if you look at the best of the technology globally, whether it is in US, whether it is in China, whether it is in Israel, whether it is in uh, any, any, any of the developed countries, it's all driven by individuals. It's all driven by people who brought the outsourcing phenomenon in India in 1990s. It wasn't government. There were few IT professionals. There were few IT entrepreneurs who, who figured out there's a huge outsourcing opportunity. And that became from one company to three companies to 10 companies to 50 companies. Similarly, the bulk drug manufacturing was at one point in time was nowhere there 30 years back. Then all of a sudden there was an entrepreneur who figured out in Hyderabad, then one company, then three companies, then 30 companies, then 3,500 companies. And that's exactly what happens. You have to be the change which you want to see in the world. You bring that technology, you bring that change and people will make you God. That's, that's exactly what is needed from Indian entrepreneur today. Stop crying, stop cribbing, figure out your strengths, change your outlook, change your outcome. That's what is going to happen. Okay. Fantastic. Siddharth, that was, that was a real passionate kind of state statement that you made in the end. I'm very happy. Uh, uh, only thing is that, uh, you know, Siddharth is uh, actually, uh, uh, sorry, Pratham has uh, left uh, the program because he was busy somewhere else. Uh, so can we take one or two more questions since we, we both have the time and the, uh, we can, we can continue. Yes. All right. All right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, Prabh, Prabh Simran Singh is asking, Sir, does the banking sector pose a problem, uh, you know, with all the NPAs rising and companies like, yes, I mean, banks like Yes Bank going down, as well as the current COVID situation when there is no income, the NPAs may just become more. So what is sector, is the banking sector going to be a problem in this whole story? So, so, so clearly, clearly, whenever there is any pandemic, whenever there is any catastrophe, banking sector is gonna get hit come what may. Because very, very simple. One entrepreneur can be in the hospitality industry. One entrepreneur can be in the foods industry. Now, when the foods business is running, that entrepreneur is not getting hit. Whilst when the hospitality industry is running, the, the, that entrepreneur is not getting hit. But banks will lend to an entrepreneur who's, who's doing business in foods, in real estate, in construction, in, 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 uh, in law, in legal system, in everywhere, right? Because their job is to lend. Now, how can you not expect when things are going to be little tough, the banking system will not take a hit. It has to take a hit because if it is not taking a hit, you're not allowing entrepreneurs to take risk and without risk, there are, there are no gains. So no risk, no returns. No, if you're not going to, if you're not going to take that extra inch of, of risk in your, in your endeavor, to get higher returns, then, 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 then obviously you're gonna, you, you are not gonna become big. Why do, so why don't people all, everyone, everyone take up jobs because they are not happy with the, with the kind of growth which they can see in, in their remuneration, right? Why did Kamlesh or why did Pratham started their, their organizations because they wanted to take extra amount of risk to ensure that there are extra gains, but when things will be tough, there would be risk and who's going to be the direct, uh, direct, uh, you know, uh, victim of it, obviously the banking and financial system. Now that's where that, and it's a great thing that ILFS happened on the hindsight, because as the ILFS happened two years back, 
everybody knew all the smallest of the banks smallest of the financial institutions smallest of the nbfcs they were all geared up they knew that that these are tough times you should learn from it and when there is a huge jerk you automatically start taking preventive and curative actions and thankfully after ilfs this pandemic hit so a lot of institutions have already learned their lessons they have already gone long on their liability book they already have sufficient capital under their belt they already have wherewithal to take that shock which will come because of this pandemic right very interesting yeah you have a very interesting take on things so srijan upadhyay has been insisting that with over 3 lakh 47000 villages in india with absolutely no basic facilities aka the education infrastructure etc right and citizens which are more are the number of people being more than 360 million uh, b- below the poverty line and not being able to afford even a day's meal is become emotional and also the ever so increasing corruption uh, even at the grassroots levels uh does it seem important to pursue the dream of creating 5 trillion dollar economy first or and is it too far so 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 very clearly uh these are not these are not a versus b goals they are not a versus b goals so i don't know if you guys if you guys uh remembered what i said you look at the examples of south korea vietnam finland china they all had similar situation what this gentleman is talking about but what happened what happened as the economic progress went higher and higher large number of people and today almost all these countries have nobody who is below poverty they have a superior education system they have a superior healthcare system they have a superior livelihood they have a superior per capita income so these are not isolated goals when india will reach a 5 trillion dollar economy or a 10 trillion dollar economy you so what kamlesh said that 1% of india owns closer to 70% plus capital or wealth of this nation it will automatically disperse more it will automatically go to the last man standing because if there is economic progress there would be more people who will be required to work to require to contribute and when you will work you will get income when you will get income then you will spend when you will spend then your quality of life improves is as simple as that so these are not two simple things this is a solution of the problem which you are stating i am very very cognizant of what you are saying but this is the only way reaching india 5 trillion dollar economy reaching india 10 trillion dollar economy is the only way is the Correct. only way fantastic that is brilliant so uh, sona k is asking how will the automobile industry be affected will the pandemic lead to more people annihilating towards private ownership of cars uh, so where is the automobile industry headed okay. after covid very interesting. very interesting question so so uh, auto industry uh we have seen last last one and a half years have been very 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 uh, you know swingy very very topsy turvy for the auto industry uh, uh the, the person is absolutely right uh, for next 12 months that's the immediate knee jerk reaction that a lot of people will want to own their private vehicles because they don't want to use the public transport uh, specifically because of this covid pandemic but remember guys that uh the world is going to change in next 3 to 3 and a half years and had this covid not happened the change would have been even faster so electric vehicles are going to be a reality petrol the oil will become history very soon so companies which will innovate companies which will bring newer models companies which will bring more efficient electric vehicles will survive now whether it will be the same ones who have done it in the past or will it, will it be the new ones i don't know i hope that the existing guys continue to innovate because they have wherewithal they have money they have got they have got power but remember uh, so l- let me kamlesh i'll just take a minute and i'll ex- right. and I'll tell a very short story so right. there were 13 more teams along with bright br- brothers when they were trying to when they were trying to find the find the flying you know how the humans can fly and bright brothers were not the most adequately funded or the most talented 
but they found the solution similarly similarly if you guys all remember airbnb airbnb originated in 2008 when lot of companies the big mighty companies went down the drain in 2008 airbnb emerged as the winner just out of the necessity because poor americans poor americans wanted some extra income they wanted some extra income from the houses on which they have borrowed lot of money so the home equity went negative and they wanted some rentals from their own house and that's how airbnb orkut orkut didn't succeed orkut orkut was very very heavily funded by google but it didn't succeed so remember it's not the mightiest it's not the most capital adequate funded it's the most agile it's the most agile it's the most adaptable who will win in auto and there's a very famous quote of chanakya i would want to quote here jo ped sabse zyada tane hote hain wo sabse pehle kaate jate hain so remember they would be they would be reshuffling in the auto sector you don't know whether the last mighty one will remain the mighty or a new guy will emerge and will become the success absolutely elon musk is now his his vehicle is the i think the highest market capitalization even more than ford and general motors put together Correct. so yeah it's pretty interesting uh, all right so uh, let's take this as a last question and it is about their mba and their future wow. so saket malladi is asking sir what will be the situation of students who will be joining mba this year as the current situation in jobs is taking a is taking a dive is taking a dive yeah okay. okay so i want to ask one question you are studying for a job or you are studying for knowledge <laughs> anyway siddharth you answer the question let me let me let me answer this question so this is very interesting so yeah guys, i know yeah so, so guys think about it you are worried so so there is a again a very famous scene i was worried about my shoes i was worried about my torn shoes till i saw a man who was walking barefoot on the sand right so so if you compare the b school students who are passing out now today this year right you are definitely better off so that's one second is as i mentioned that after 12 months indian economy is going to bounce indian economy is going to bounce with a vengeance with a with a strong growth indian economy will be one of the fastest growing economies after this pandemic and this this is the best time because next one year anyways nothing is going to happen so you may as well learn get educated find out new ideas new new concepts put it into practical use because in this year nobody is going to talk about growth earnings people will only talk about one thing survival so if you use this time for your learning for your concepts next year you would be on a on a on a springboard because people would need newer concepts newer technologies newer ideas newer enthusiasm because everybody is just disheartened everybody is just tepid and remember i'm repeating again and i've said this in the past weak never cures weak small can never make anyone big so first these are the great times when you have to reinvent when you have to figure out how you want to shape the new world and people who had these misconceptions till now you know there is a very famous saying have you checked your price tag today in these pandemics every top executive everybody who used to think they are invincible they are checking their price tags are they relevant because the world after 12 months ain't going to be the same the technology ain't going to be the same the concepts ain't going to be the same the way you do business isn't going to be the same so it's next 12 months when you learn when you make those changes and take the world with a storm because world needs you world needs your enthusiasm world needs your capability and world needs your new ideas not the redundant path 
Wonderful. That was amazing, Siddharth. It was very enlightening, not only I'm sure for the students who attended, but even for me. So fantastic. It was such a pleasure, Siddhartha. It was such a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much for being a part of this uh, story. And I'm sure there are students who are impressed and they are going to kind of at least apply and then see if they can make it into the master's union. So thank you very much and all the best, guys.